Hey everyone, it is Evan here from The Trade Risk on Monday, February 4th, here with a new series on long-term market technicals. We're going to be looking at the big picture overview of the major asset classes, some even more macro than we're used to doing in our uh, just week-to-week -week swing trading analysis. This is going to be a bigger picture overview, kind of give us the high level of what's going on in price structure, looking at monthly time frames, going back over the past 10 years and really just trying to get a good sense of the big picture market structure to help inform our shorter term uh, market decisions. Probably only going to be doing this video every month, once a month or so, because I don't think the structure of the markets are going to change all that fast looking at this type of time frame. Uh, and we are exploring stockcharts.com for this video. Uh, we do get a little more uh, kind of indice action here or um, indice representation of um, of markets and we can use some spot futures contracts and get a little more breadth studies. So I think I'm going to try this out with stockcharts.com uh, here and be aware that all of the ETFs or any of the ETFs that we look at are total return data. So that means it includes dividends. Uh, so do keep that in mind when you're looking at some of the ETF charts uh, throughout this video. But I think with that said, let's jump into it. Remember, this is not made to be looking at the next week's action or what tomorrow is going to be. This is very much looking at the big picture trends um, to help sort of inform our day-to-day, uh, -day, week to week decisions. So so here we're going to kick things off with the Dow Jones Industrials and we can see we simply have price and volume here with some trend lines drawn and really just one trend line and it is the big one from 2009 the lows made down around 7,000 you can see that slope has been holding for uh, the past 10 years we've tested this we almost tested this in 2011 uh, we did test this area in 2015 a few times uh, which paved way to an acceleration higher uh, and now we're fi finally starting to see uh, some volatility and a little bit of indecision up here around this uh, you know 26,000 area we still have yet to kind of get back and tag uh, this long-term trend line we got down to around 22,000 uh, just a month or so ago but we did not get in a, a full sort of test here so I think going forward you know the long-term trend is still very much intact the shorter term you know um, and again, shorter term relative to this time frame, the the, the two year trend line that was accelerated here, for, starting from 2016, that has been violated over the past you know month or two, and we are in the state of sort of volatility, increased volatility, sideways movement here uh, on this monthly time frame, and I think the sellers at this point are going to be wanting a rollover here and a firm and full retest of 21,000. You know, and frankly, it wouldn't be. Um, you know, it wouldn't be out of the question. It certainly would be in the realm of possibilities and healthy, uh, even on this time frame, to have another leg down, another big kind of shakeout down to this 21,000 level, retest it, and then maybe, you know, the bull market continues from there. But as it stands right now, we've got a pause in uh, the nice smooth uptrend, and uh, we are kind of working our way sideways and uh, waiting to see how the market develops from here. Now, if we go to some of the other major markets, I will start to get a little more context and clues here. The S&P 500, for instance, did test this long 10-year trend that started from the bottom in 2009, sub 700. We tested it again in 2011, 2015, and now in 2018, we got that test in December, uh, right around or under 2,400. So we did get the test here. Uh, we are bouncing higher. We're still well off of the highs made just uh, mid last uh, 2018 uh, but we are at least bouncing off of this level and we're waiting to see how far this bounce can take us now what's interesting to note here when we're looking at the big picture trend for tw uh, for the S&P 500 is 
most of the other tests of this major trend line have come in a, a couple of month period. So we've had a couple of tests or at least a retest of this trend line. Same thing in, in 2011, we had a, a little bit of sideways movement and buyers showing up around that trend line. Um, and, and it wasn't just a one off kind of V-shaped rally. So it would be interesting to see if this bucks the trend, if we just head higher from here and start making new highs later this year, or uh, if in fact we are going to get some type of rollover and test a, again a retest so to speak of that 2400 area in the coming months I think that's what's uh, going to be interesting to watch but for now as you can see here we have a nice healthy uptrend in both the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 despite uh, the near-term volatility now if we take it down to the composite we have uh, an even different view here where we have the long-term trend from 2009 in place and we've come no Nowhere near testing that uh, even in this recent market pullback so in December at the worst of it uh, we got as low as around 6250 but notice the trend line down here around 5500 so almost a thousand points uh, below where we got to in December this is well off of retesting uh, the major trend line and the last time we tested it was in 2016 so what we did get instead though was a, a clean break of this more accelerated trend line so the the composite really took off here in 2016 on a very orderly uptrend that trend line was broken and we find ourselves sort of sandwiched underneath the faster trend line but still above uh, say this horizontal level and this 5700 long-term trend so the composite I think the seller's case here again uh, is for another leg down, a retest here, a shakeout, a nice uh, healthy big one as well, uh, down to around 57.50. It certainly doesn't have to get there, uh, but it would be a reasonable reset uh, in the big picture if the composite could get down there. Otherwise, uh, we would want to reclaim the slope here of um, this recent trend line break from a couple of months ago. We'd like to see stabilization up here and make this the higher low from which the composite can rally to. That is the big picture, though, of what we're looking at. And there's lots of range, lots of opportunity in here in the medium term uh, for traders looking on a swing basis or even a position basis. Uh, but the, the, the landscape now from the big picture, though, is, is certainly wedged in between these longer term trend lines. If we take it down to the Russell 2000 here, we can see we got a undercut of the trend line that started from 2009 uh, that had come in right around 1300 in uh, the Russell 2000. We had a orderly channel to the upside since 2015, 2016 time that was broken. We got that retest slamming down and now we are on our way higher. So kind of like the Russell here, we are, I'm sorry, kind of like the Qs or the composite we do find ourselves kind of in between the tail of two uh, influential big and major trend lines. It'll be interesting to see the Russell right now is currently kind of in no man's land here. Uh, we'll see if this sticks as a low and a retest. The Russell led on the way down. We'll see if it can lead on the way up here and it's still kind of the index that I'd be paying most attention to going forward. Now, if we look at breadth here, we look at the uh, monthly cumulative advanced decline line for the NYSE and the positive note for the bulls is that we have gotten a fast sort of resumption back here towards highs. This isn't a 10 year chart. This is just a multi year chart uh, because um, of just the scale. It's much easier to read. But we can see that in all of the uh, of major averages above when we've had this multi month pullback, you can see it represented right here. But what we notice is that the, the cumulative AD line is very quickly uh, getting back up to the highs. And if we can start to take out the highs and start making new um, to to, to new highs here, that would be a constructive signal in the overall market to see that uh, the average stock is in fact uh, kind of working itself higher. We are getting breath 
uh, participating to the upside in a broad-based fashion. And if we can get that breakout here, that would bode well for the charts all laid above uh, of getting back and reclaiming some of these old highs and prior trend lines. So that is a constructive development there. When we look at the number of stocks making new 52-week lows and highs in the NYSE, you can see we really uh, did have a good um, kind of sprout to the downside here on the last quarter of 2018. In fact, it far eclipsed um, uh, the, the lows made or the uh, breath kind of pushed in 2015. In fact, we got a more extreme reading here in the final kind of weeks of December. So we had a really nice washout for the number of stocks making new 52-week lows. However, what we want to see now is we want to see expansion to the upside. So you can see we're finally starting to get more new highs than we are getting new lows. But we want to see that number, you know, really I like to see north of 100, 150. As we start to get into that 200 area, that is where we get a nice sweet trending market. Think about 2016, 17. Um, We've got nice kind of uh, moves above 200. Most of the most of the weeks closing above 100, 150. That's where we'd like to see um, more kind of uh, uh, thrust above is the number of stocks making new 52-week highs. If we can collectively stay positive and if we can start inching closer to that 200 mark, that again would bode well for uh, the long-term trend continuing to the upside. We're still waiting a little bit more on this chart. Uh, the AD line is certainly in a better spot. It's repaired things quicker, uh, but we're still waiting for the number of 52-week highs to really sort of accelerate uh, to the upside and get back into positive, strongly positive territory. When we look at VIX here, we get a 10-year chart of the VIX and we get a 10 SMA on here, so a 10-month simple moving average. You can see the 10-month average of VIX right now is around 16.62 and we are trading at a 15 0.6 handle at the time of recording this. So we are below the 10 period uh, monthly moving average here for the VIX. Not looking to do any technical analysis here, simply just kind of stating where volatility has been over the past 10 months or so. We've seen the flare ups in 2018. Volatility has compressed now. It's below the 10 month average. And we'll start to see if this moving average can start to trend down throughout the course of 2016 17. We could see it got as low as almost 12, 11. Um, in the 10 month moving average. So we'll see if that can start to cool off now or uh, if we're about to see some, some ugly kind of mean reversion here to the upside. Back in 2009, we saw a 10 month moving average as high as 45. So there's certainly room to the upside if the market wants to roll over again. Uh, but for now, we find ourselves kind of cooling off back below the average. Now, when we start to look abroad and look at some other major assets, we look at the US dollar here and this is the dollar index. So this is heavily weighted to the dollar versus Euro. Uh, but what we can see here is mostly just trendless action. We see the dollar mostly range bound in between the 88 and uh, call it 100, 101. Um, again, the index anyway. And you can see we're kind of smack in the middle of it right now, kind of starting to taper off just a little bit. We've enjoyed a nice move off of the lows here uh, from uh, the start of 2018. But now you can see there's a little bit of faltering, a little bit of choppy action coming in here. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. But really, when we look at the dollar, uh, the dollar index anyway, isn't a whole lot of trend to speak of at this time. Uh, there's certainly room to $100 on the upside, or if we roll back over, we should be paying attention to 88 uh, for now, not seeing much uh, of interest. When we look at junk bonds, so credit market here, high yield credit, uh, this is also a place where lots of traders, investors look at for um, uh, tales of how um, you know how the credit markets would potentially lead equity markets and what we can see with JNK here and again this is a total return chart but there's been a uh, very quick repair of the uh, fourth quarter sell-off in 2018 in fact junk bonds is are, are already back to nearly making new total return highs here uh, that is encouraging that we've seen a recovery in credit markets here uh, for again boding well for the equity market 
markets as a whole. If you start to see the rollover here, if you see a fast rollover here, that is where uh, some concern would potentially spill back over into uh, equity markets. For now, we're not seeing it. We're seeing back a move back towards those highs. That is a constructive signal. When we look into uh, the world equity markets, so this is the MS world. This is uh, the world XUS. So this is everything outside of the United States. And we can see here that this really was uh, one of the first to lead to the downside. This started on the relative weakness was world markets, equity markets outside of the US. We started seeing weakness here uh, right at the beginning or end of 2017, beginning of 2018. Uh, but they started and continued to stay weak on a relative basis. And when we look here at the MS world, you can see there's not a whole lot of trend now uh, to the upside. We're getting, you know, maybe at best a very gradual trend of um, kind of higher highs and higher lows here, but very gradual and um, you know uh, nothing nothing of strong uh, you know force here at all. We really need a move back over 2000, 2050 to get this uh, to get this trend strong on the upside for uh, international markets. It's a long way to go from where we currently are. There's still a lot of damage here. It saw a nice recovery last month, uh, but there's certainly more technical damage to repair. So uh, for uh, the world equity markets, we're really looking uh, to see if this can continue to push higher here. Um, maybe, you know, it's been weak versus the um, it's been weak versus the. Um, the US markets for a long time for most of the past year or so and it is starting to outperform now um, so we'll see if that can continue uh, going into the rest of 2019 we got about six charts left on page number two we have emerging markets now and this is looking quite constructive again it's a total return chart of the EEM but what you can see here is again we had uh, this orderly kind of sell-off here in the last um, you know year or so starting in 2018 and again the monthly chart really makes this look orderly when you look at a daily chart it looks horrendous it looks scary uh, when you look at a monthly chart though it kind of keeps things in perspective especially given the move we had off of the lows in 2016 uh, and now we you can see though we are trying to resolve this uh, call it a flag a down channel whatever you want to call it to the upside based on the last monthly candle and I think the longer we can stay above 42 or so this looks good here for emerging markets they've seen a nice rip off of the uh, those lows they've been one of the strongest performing in the past few weeks so uh, continue to look at this for a uh, possibility for continued outperformance going forward really like to see this over 42 don't forget that is total return numbers if we look at TLT here uh, we can see mostly sideways you know there's lots of criticism and and, and analysis going on in, in treasuries now but um, really you know over the past couple of years here we've been moving sideways between this 110 and uh, 125 level we had this breakout up here which failed and we came back into this range and uh, now we're kind of uh, hanging out in the upper end of this range we're seeing a little bit of indecision here but really it is a chop fest here until we can start to break below above 125 or below 112 110 those are the real big key uh, kind of macro levels there that we should be looking at for TLT we are right now in the middle of that range towards the upper half of it uh, so it's quite noisy right now there are some shorter term trends you can certainly take advantage of but from a longer term perspective 125 112 or 111 that's what I'd be paying attention to if we go down to gold here, uh, gold still kind of uh, carving out this pattern of a uh, sideways consolidation ever since uh, pulling off of the highs and putting in a big retrace since 2012 uh, time area. We really haven't uh, performed too much in gold here. We've been mostly moving sideways, trying to find uh, some stabilization. And I think the last few months, though, have been encouraging is taking a look at just the volume that has come into GLD, some nice accumulation uh, as it 
it started to work its way above this 110 level. We certainly are not in the, out of the woods yet. We're not in a strongly trending long-term environment yet for GLD. We need to get over 130, 135, start making our way back to the 2013 levels and break out of this pattern and this recent range to really get excited. Uh, but certainly, you know, again, from a shorter term perspective, uh, if you've been trading this on a daily or weekly chart, there certainly has been opportunity from 110 to 124. That's a good size move for GLD. Uh, but do just note on the bigger picture, the volume that's coming in here as it was decelerating for most of this uh, chop in here has picked up to the upside. And be interesting to see if the bulls can get a retest and um, you know potential breakout of uh, the high 120s area. When we look at silver, I think silver is, is actually one of the most interesting right now because this seems most coiled, most pent up here uh, to potentially break out to the upside. This has been, again, consolidating and pulling back since really 2011, 2010 after topping out up around 46, almost $48 and change. Uh, this has really gone nowhere. It's been, in fact, cut in half uh, and it's been just mostly consolidating sideways. So our slight increase in volume over the past couple of months, not as, um, uh, you know, clear as gold. Um, but I think, you know, when, when we think about metals generally, you'd like to see in a bull market for metals, silver outperform gold, that ratio, silver to gold ratio. Uh, we're starting to see it kind of turn up a little bit, uh, but really for silver, uh, above $16, $17, that is where uh, I think it's going to get a lot of interest is if we can start to get a breakout above this 2018 highs uh, and start to break above this trend line could really see kind of a sharp breakout move and rotation into silver. That would be the exciting part. Uh, the uh, not so exciting part is if we in fact fail at these highs here, at this trend line that has been holding price in place as resistance since 2013, that would be problematic. So we'll see how uh, silver shakes out for the next couple of months. But I think it's one of the more interesting actionable zones that we're at for uh, these long-term charts. When we look at crude down here next, you can see crude really uh, kind of trapped in no man's land, $30. Uh, you know, we made an ultimate low or, you know, we had a low in 2016 around just over $25 and change. Change, but really, you know, that $30, $32 oil seems to be an interesting level. That's where we sold off back in 2009 as well. Uh, we're mostly, you know, the way I look at this, mostly sideways here between a very, very wide range on the monthly chart between, case, call it, um, you know, 30, 35, all the way up to 72, $75, where we topped out just a few months ago. Uh, we broke this down channel. We're in the midpoint of the range here. So, from a longer term structural basis, crude oil seems to be uh, kind of in a tough spot, no man's land, so to speak, um, on a daily or weekly chart. That means there's certainly opportunity to play inside of this range. Just note that we don't have a strong trend uh, from the bigger picture perspective now in oil. Uh, it was broken down from this channel. So really, we should be looking at uh, you know potentially a move to retest the 2016 lows if we are to roll over and kind of leg lower once again. Finally, if we look at uh, natural gas here, this is our last chart of this video, you can see this had such a wild uh, end of 2018, moving from you know 275 all the way up to 450 or so, 475, you know, almost a doubling uh, in uh, the natural gas uh, contract here. But you can see it's given it all right back, just a really fierce squeeze and then total, uh, almost complete reversal. It seems like, uh, given the way this price action looks here, we're on the move back to this 250 area. This has been holding as support since mid 2016 is $2.50. We're trading at $2.73. So it seems like we could, you know, kind of retest that support, find some buyers there potentially. And maybe that would be where, uh, you know, some type of rotation bounce starts to happen. But from a bigger picture perspective here, you can see there's absolutely no clear trend in natural gas. It's gone nowhere since 2009. Uh, if anything, it's just kind of mulled along 
long sideways to down. Uh, and until we break above now uh, the reference point we made just a couple of months ago, above 450, 475, that's really what we need to wait for, for a bigger picture trend to emerge. Uh, until that happens, uh, we certainly have volatility and a range to play in on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, but uh, no long picture trend at our backs. So that is the last chart I had uh, in this series. Got 16 names or 16 charts to go through. If you um, enjoyed this video, let me know if you have any uh, comments or uh, additional charts you'd like us to look at uh, for the next time. That would be helpful as well. Again, only going to go through these, I think, uh, about once a month, maybe every five or six weeks, in fact, um, just to um, you know not overdo it because a lot of these moves uh, are really just going to take place over multiple months and they're not going to change in a very short order. But uh, it is interesting and it is always important, I think, to keep a good uh, high-level picture of some of the major assets at minimum. Um, and hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If you have, if you do enjoy it, you can subscribe on our YouTube channel uh, or follow us on the Trade Risk blog, traderisk.com forward slash blog. Keeps you up to date with all of the latest that we are publishing. So thanks so much. Have a good rest of the week and uh, happy trading.